Have you ever thought about what it really means to own a stock? Well, buckle up, because the truth might surprise you. It turns out that, technically, you don't actually own any of the stocks in your portfolio. Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. And it's all because of one little company containing less than a dozen people who technically owns every stock in the U.S. that are traded on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchanges. If you're feeling betrayed or confused by the fact that you don't technically own the stocks in your portfolio, don't worry, you're not alone. It's a concept that can be difficult to wrap your head around. But fear not, because today we're going to dive into the fascinating world of Seed & Company and how they hold the keys to every single stock traded on the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchanges. Get ready to have your mind blown. Do you remember the old days and old ways of selling stocks? You probably don't. But don't worry, you don't need to ask your grandparents because we know exactly what they will say. Ah, the old days of selling paper stocks. It seems like a world away from the fast-paced, high-tech world of investing we know today. You heard it right. The paper stock. Back then, when you bought a stock, you would receive a physical certificate as proof of ownership. These certificates were often ornate and beautifully designed, with intricate engravings and signatures. It was like owning a little piece of history. But there was a downside to this quaint old system. These paper certificates could be lost or damaged, and transferring ownership was a slow and cumbersome process. Imagine having to physically transport your certificate every time you wanted to sell a stock. And if you were buying a stock from someone else, you had to verify the authenticity of their certificate before completing the transaction. It was a system that was ripe for fraud and error. Let's go and have a walk around on Wall Street of older times. The old paper stock system. It was a fascinating time in Wall Street's history, and one that's worth exploring. Back in the day, when you bought a stock, you received a physical certificate as proof of ownership. These certificates were typically printed on ornate paper with intricate designs, and they contained all the important details about the stock, such as the name of the company, the number of shares you owned, and the date of issuance. But buying and selling stocks back then was a far cry from the fast and efficient system we have today. If you wanted to sell a stock, you had to physically transport your certificate to the broker or exchange where you wanted to sell it. This was a slow and cumbersome process that could take days or even weeks to complete. Once you arrived at the exchange, you would hand over your certificate to the broker, who would then examine it to ensure that it was authentic. If everything checked out, the broker would then sell the stock on your behalf and give you the proceeds of the sale. But the process didn't end there. The buyer of your stock would then have to go through the same process of verifying the authenticity of your certificate before completing the transaction. This meant that a single stock certificate could pass through many hands before finally reaching its new owner. But despite its flaws, this paper-based system persisted for many years until the advent of electronic trading made it obsolete. How, you might ask? The transition from paper stock certificates to electronic trading was driven by several factors, one of which was the need for increased transparency and efficiency in the financial markets. As a result, the government took steps to modernize the financial system and protect investors. One of the key laws that paved the way for the transition to electronic trading was the Securities Act of 1933, which required companies to disclose certain information about their financial operations and provide greater protection for investors. Another important piece of legislation was the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, which created the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, and gave it the power to regulate and oversee the securities markets. Over time, the SEC and other regulatory bodies worked to develop electronic trading systems that were faster, more efficient, and more secure than the old paper-based systems. One such body was DTC, Depository Trust Company. Picture this, it's the 1970s and the world is changing fast. The demand for stocks is increasing, but the old paper-based systems is struggling to keep up. There are delays, errors, and even fraud. Something has to change and fast. Enter the Depository Trust Company, or DTC. Founded in 1973, the DTC is a central securities depository that plays a crucial role in the modern financial system. Before the DTC, the process of buying and selling stocks was slow and cumbersome. The DTC changed all of that by creating an electronic book entry system 
that eliminated the need for physical certificates altogether. What the hell just happened? What is this electronic book entry system? Imagine you're a bookworm who loves nothing more than getting lost in a good novel. You head to the library to check out the latest bestseller, but instead of getting a physical book, the librarian hands you a slip of paper with a barcode on it. Confused, you ask where the book is, and the librarian explains that the library has gone digital. All of the books are now stored electronically, and you can access them on your e-reader or computer. This is essentially what the electronic book entry system is. Instead of physical stock certificates, which can be lost or stolen, the system uses a digital record to keep track of your ownership. When you buy a stock, your broker updates your digital account with the new shares. When you sell a stock, the shares are transferred to the buyer's digital account. The beauty of this system is that it eliminates the need for physical certificates. All these certificates are now held by one company, and that is Seed and Company. Seed Company is nothing but the subsidiary of DTC. It acts as DTC's nominee, meaning that it holds the physical stock certificates on behalf of DTC. When a transfer of ownership occurs between two investors who are both participants in DTC, DTC updates its internal records to reflect the transfer of ownership. This transfer is accomplished by adjusting the account balances of the two investors in DTC's books, rather than by physically moving any share certificates. When a transfer of ownership occurs between two investors who are both participants in DTC, Seed and Company does not need to physically move any share certificates. Instead, the transfer is accomplished by updating the ownership records in DTC's internal system. Amazing or brilliant? I guess both. Seed is like the guardian of the electronic stock certificates, making sure that ownership is properly recorded and transfers are executed correctly. Without them, the whole system would be chaos. So you must be wondering what we call the thing we have in our DMAT account. Actually, when you buy stocks, you are only buying contractual rights to the shares of the company. Technically speaking, you don't actually own a physical piece of the company. When you invest in the stock market, it can feel like you're buying a tangible piece of a company. After all, you're investing your hard-earned cash with the hope of seeing a return on your investment. And little did you know that when you buy stocks, you're actually only purchasing contractual rights to the shares of the company. That's right. All you are buying is rather a set of rights that give you a stake in the company's future. It's a bit like buying a ticket to a concert or sporting event. The ticket doesn't give you ownership of the venue, but it does give you the right to enter and enjoy the event. Similarly, when you buy a stock, you're not buying the company itself, but you are buying the right to participate in the company's decisions and potentially earn a return on your investment. So while you may not be able to physically hold a piece of the company, the contractual rights you own are just as valuable, if not more so. They give you the power to vote in shareholder meetings, receive dividends, and potentially benefit from the company's growth and success. And all of this is made possible thanks to the efficient and streamlined processes of the Depository Trust Company and the Certificate Depository, SEED, who, now you know, technically owns every stock in the U.S. Hope you find this video interesting. Let us know your opinions and questions in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And for more interesting videos like this, subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.